So today's video is sponsored, isn't it? It is sponsored, yes, by the maker of this wonderful shirt. The singer Adele has had a pretty stellar career, what with all the awards, number one hits, and that time she released a single so hauntingly beautiful, it made the ever-present Brit- Damn it! Oh, so close! <laughs> huh. The ever-present symbol of British stoicism, James Bond, cry like a little girl. Fuck it, we're leaving that take in. <laughs> she also apparently owes her entire career to a shit boyfriend, at least according to him. All right, so what is going on here? Well, far away, Nisha, like many singers, Adele draws much of the inspiration for her music um, from her own experiences, and in particular, her past hardships, which is a diplomatic way of saying she sings about the shitty relationship she's been in. Something I'm going to guess isn't all that surprising to a lot of the people watching this, given that there are many singers who do that. Uh, Nisha, do you have an example in your head? I think the obvious one is Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, yes, and we all know the joke. It's, oh yeah, um, uh, I walked past Taylor Swift last week and she smiled at me. I didn't smile back. I expect a new album <laughs> next week. It's like, yeah, we get it. She writes a lot of songs about those ex-boyfriends. <laughs> and isn't there like an ongoing conversation between her and other musicians? Like there's that Harry Styles song apparently he wrote in retaliation of one she did. And I, I find it strange, but at the same time, kind of amazing that singers will write responses to their exes and just sing about them and make money off of it. So have you ever heard there's a song like Fuck You? I forget who sung it. Is it the one by CeeLo Green? No, there's another one called, I think it's called Fuck You or something like that. And then the girl it's about wrote a response oh, called yeah. Fuck You Right yeah. Back. And then in a similar vein to that, you have things like Dolly Parton with her biggest hit being Jolene, which is a song all about just this redheaded temptress trying to steal away her man. And it's this giant fucking hit that everybody loves. It's like, so it's not exactly a new or original thing to do as a musician to sing about past hardships or failed relationships or just relationship troubles in general. But Adele does appear to be an outlier in the sense that the subjects of those songs got so mad, they demanded royalties for the song. Yeah, this sounds really stupid, so what happened? Uh, well, shortly after the release of Adele's debut album, 19, she was contacted by her ex, uh, basically asking her for royalties and inquiring about when he was going to receive them. Um, when a bemused Adele asked, the fuck are you talking about? I wrote every song on the album except for a cover that I did as a favour to my manager because he likes that song. Where the fuck do you come in here? He genuinely argued that because a lot of the songs were inspired by their failed relationship, he deserved a cut of the money. Uh, and just Nisha, uh, you know, as a as a woman, thoughts. I'm I'm speechless. It's just so stupid. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I put you through this pain, so I deserve money. It's like, no, you don't. It's just you like, put me through hell. You don't deserve money. That's literally what Adele said. We'll get to that in a moment. And um, like, according to Adele, like. This guy was 100% serious and was calling her every day for several weeks saying, where's my money? You owe me money. Like all of these songs were written by you in direct response to our relationship, which I was a part of. Therefore, I am tangentially responsible for the songs and deserve credit and money. And she's like, the fuck? Like, that's not how this works. And I have to address something here that I'm guessing some men because we know it's men, are screaming about in the comments right now that we only have Adele's word to go on about how poor this relationship was and how much of a bell end um, uh, her ex was, because she never named the ex because she's classy like that. And all I'll say in response to that is, does a person who would genuinely think to call up their ex to demand royalties for a song they wrote and they had nothing to do with sound like the kind of person who will be able to maintain a healthy relationship? No. Sounds like no. a dickhead. <laughs> Sounds like a dickhead, which is what Adele said. And she's like, as I mentioned, she's very classy. She's like, I, I, I don't want to name the guy. He was a prick, but I'm going to give him the chance, you know, better himself. And his response to that is, but not give him my money, though. <laughs> you almost have to respect the goal it takes to think that. To look at this album, see if it's a big hit, look at the lyrics, realise they're about your failed relationship, which you ruined by being a dick and go, well... I'm the reason she's so sad in these songs, and therefore I'm partially responsible for them. I should get some money. 
pay me for being a dick. It reminds me a little bit of a story that went viral recently in relation to when we recorded this video. So it might be quite old now when this goes live, but did you hear about that lady in a Starbucks, I think it was, who screamed at the cashier for asking her to wear a mask? I think so, yeah. And I'm guessing from those details alone, people are like, that's happened a hundred times already. What's the twist here, Carl? And the twist is that uh, this lady posted this thinking that everyone would be on her side. Of like, look at this stuck up cashier just doing his job, asking me to wear a mask because he doesn't want to die. And she posted it publicly and everyone started roasting her. And in response, um, people set up a GoFundMe to give that um, barista a tip. And I think it was like $100,000 in total. And that lady saw that and went, well, where's my cut? <laughs> no one would have known about this guy if it wasn't for me. Where's my cut? And she genuinely felt entitled to a cut of the money because she is the reason that it got raised. Completely ignoring the fact the only reason it got raised is because you were such an unthinkable shitbird to this poor dude. <laughs> of a Choosing Beggars subreddit, which we've talked about privately before. Like, um, as a group, we've gone through that and we are astounded by just the level of entitlement displayed by people. Uh, oh, I'm giving away some stuff for free. Um, oh, can I have some? It's first come, first serve, so yeah, a week later. Have you still got that stuff? Oh no, I gave it away. The fuck, you promised me that? No, I didn't. I want to come and beat you up. It's like, what? Where did this come from? Yeah, I saw this one where this guy was giving something away for free and someone asked where they lived. So the guy's like, oh, I live here. And then the person wanting it was yeah. like, oh, could you drop it off for me or give me gas, petrol money to come fetch it for you? <laughs> and then the person's it's like, like it's but it's free? That like, I'm doing you a favour. Like, it's like, no, you're not. It's free. And... Uh, before we move on, my absolute favourite one is um, just a screenshot. It's like short and sweet. A guy's like selling something on um, like Gumtree or something like that, one of those services. And the response is, oh, um, how about a little leeway on the price? Can we haggle a bit? And the response is, bro, it's $2. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, I ain't got fucking time to waste haggling over two fucking dollars. I saw one recently, actually, where someone put a post okay. on Facebook asking for people to donate money to them. And they said people couldn't donate less than $100. Mm -hmm. And they were saying to all those people who are too broke to donate me $100, basically, <laughs> piss off. I'm like, you're calling people broke, but you're asking people to donate you money. Yeah, I've seen that multiple times and experienced it personally. Because obviously running a channel that's uh, somewhat successful. Congratulations, well done us. I get a lot of people asking for just free handouts, for nothing in return. And you've seen some examples that I've shared um, like in our groups privately. It's like, what is the game here for me? It's like, oh, will you mention my YouTube channel on your YouTube channel? I have 40 subscribers, I'll give you a shout out on mine. It's like, how is this equivalent? And I should clarify, the person who sponsored this episode gave me 10 pounds for doing this, but that's because they are my friend. So I'm happy to offer a substantial discount to anyone I know personally, but not random fucker on YouTube. So bring it back to Adele. Yes. What happened to this guy? Um, he was told in no uncertain terms to fucking do one. And Adele ignored his calls for several weeks until she got so pissed off with the demands for money, she answered the phone and screamed down the line, you made my life hell, I lived it, I deserve this. And it's like, yeah, fucking hell. And you said that exact same thing. Yeah, just hearing what sort of guy he is, I immediately thought, oh, he must have made her life hell. Yeah. And Adele's argument is just so fucking on point. It's like, you made my life hell. You created an atmosphere where my only escape was my music. And my music is now making me millions of dollars. I earned that. That's mine. Fuck you. <laughs> and I can only, only hope that Adele like, sang those words down the phone at the top of her voice. Because you know that if Adele can make James Bond cry with her voice, she could sure as shit make a shitty guy's ball shrink. So, as we mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored. Yes, by the maker of this wonderful t-shirt here, a friend of mine, Lulu. Um, a link to her Red Bull store you will find below. And the story behind this is, uh, she has recently quit her job in the middle of a pandemic to pursue a more creative um, uh, form of earning money. And I 100% respect that because that's what I did, but I didn't do it in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> Um, during a conversation, I said, look, uh, like, I will help you out. If you 
pay me a tenner and send me a shirt. I'll wear it in a video and talk about it. Um, and then a week later in the mail, I got this shirt. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. Um, I, I guess I better get right on that then. <laughs> and the, the worst part is I actually got two shirts. And I've got another one, which is the one I picked from the store, uh, a picture of which you'll see me wearing behind me now. But um, I said that I'm a large because I'm quite tall, but they ordered just a regular large and not a slim fit or fitted large. So I'm large in the sense that I'm long. I'm not wide. So I'm buried by this shirt. And I went, oh man, I, I, I can't wear that in the video. It makes, your st it, makes it look bad because it like, makes it look like it doesn't fit. And I thought, we also have a red bubble store and I don't want people thinking that red bubble sucks. <laughs> so I'm like, can you please send me another one? And they did at their own cost. And like, thank you very much. I'm going to wear it in more videos because it's kind of hilarious. And I believe Nisha, you've seen the store, yes? Yeah, I've had a look myself, yeah. There you go. You've got any favorite examples from it you can talk about now? Because yeah, I was paid a tenner. I'm gonna earn that fucking tenner right now. Yeah, I really like the hospitality hedgie. That's really oh, cute. Oh, that's the one I wanted on a shirt. I wanted that <laughs> one. That was Because uh, what this friend does is they do artwork, just like, oh, send me an animal. Like, tell me an animal and I'll make it into an artwork. And that's uh, where the high racks came from that we've got on our store. So I went, oh, I like the high racks because no one knows what a fuck a high racks is. So they drew a high racks for me and I like, bought that and put it on our merch store. And it's like, oh, name an animal, a hedgehog. And it's a hedgehog serving hors d'oeuvres from its spikes. Oh, that's adorable. So cute. So good. And the one I've got is a... I've just seen, I don't know if this is a new one, but Bobby okay. the Pelican. I've not seen Bobby the Pelican. Right, there'll be some pictures behind me. It's, um, so it's just a really cute um, uh, just art style. And they, like, they work really well for shirts. I hope people can see. But like, the other one that I got is like white. It's like a white t-shirt, which I like white t-shirts for showing off stuff. And then like, it, like I said, it just buried me. And it's like, this one makes me look shit. And two, it like, doesn't really like show off the the design at all because it's all crumpled and stuff I'm like oh now I feel so bad can you see can you please send me another shirt at your own expense and she's like yeah I will and I felt super fucking bad doing it <laughs> but I've got a business to run yeah she she posted on her Instagram story about opening a shop and I uh, link below so I'll have a look and then she said she'll let me know if she does any cat designs because she knows I'm a crazy cat person. Uh, this friend as well has potentially one of the strongest ideas for a YouTube channel I've heard in a while. And I don't want to say anything about it so no one steals the idea. Uh, but I'll also be doing a collaboration with them on that because it's something that I think is really cool and would like to support. But uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you very much, Lulu. I hope uh, that your future endeavours go well and that this in some small way will help that and if you're a fan of the channel and you want to support someone who is a friend of the channel um it would really mean a lot to me and to my friend uh, if you go check out their store and offer some polite nice feedback on it and if you're a, you want to offer some bad feedback um how about you go fuck yourself instead <laughs> so that's not the kind of energy we want to promote on the channel